Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, welcome to our end of year houseplants and cacti and succulent indoor update. As you guys know who follow me, I have a polytunnel out the back packed with uh, plants, mostly cacti and succulents, and also a house filled with plants. And because it's gonna be such a long video if I do the whole thing, I'm doing it in two parts. This is part one which is the indoor house plant and cacti and succulent plant update and part two hopefully she'll be on possibly tonight if not tomorrow will be the polytunnel collection of cacti and succulents so um as you know this is me and hansi's amazing collection of plants and i'm going to start off here in our living room and here we have um hansi's clever dendron thumb thumbs thumbs and a and um, this is absolutely growing amazing and I'm going to try and keep the video as quick as possible guys because not only does it take forever to make and render but also you guys especially at this time of year are very busy with the holidays and everything so here we go that is doing really well lots of new growth coming upon this and as I say it is winter so there's not a lot really happening with the plants so hopefully it shouldn't be too long of an update everything's sort of mainly overwintering at the moment here we have um, Streptocarpus, um, Streptocarpus polka dot purple and Streptocarpus titania. Again, they're not flowering at the moment, just resting, but still looking pretty good. Now here we have Hansi's incredible Devalia fern and it is absolutely flourishing. Just look at them lovely hairy rhizomes, guys. Absolutely beautiful. They are actually furry. Absolutely gorgeous to touch. Doing very well there. And this is sort of happy sitting in the pot of this incredible, incredible uh, Stephanotis floribunda here, which is sort of growing like an incredible vine all the way along the window here. We have the little fairy lights because me and Hansi celebrate the, um, the solstice. So we've had the lights on there. And by the way, guys, happy holidays to you all. And if you, if you celebrate Christmas, happy, um, happy Christmas and holidays to you. And um, hope you have an amazing new year. And as I said, the Stephanotis doing well there. And then we have here, these are mostly all Hansi's plants in the living room here. This is a philodendron, absolutely beautiful. As I say, growing into an incredible vine. This window here is actually a very large, a lovely large, mostly north facing window. Just got a little bit of sun, but it doesn't, it's mostly sort of north. But it's perfect for growing these type of plants that prefer more of a indirect light position. Some more St. Paulia in the window there, commonly known as the African violets. Again, not in flower, just sort of overwintering. This one's coming to the end of its little flower in there. But that's the living room windows here. And now I'm going to take you into the, yeah, the kitchen. <laughs> so I'm going to take you across here into our kitchen. Now, I'll start off with here. These are our mostly the, uh, the pyloserious type of cacti and the reason why we've got them here sitting in the kitchen on, on newspaper is because they're overwintering and um, they're not cold hardy plants. Pyloserious prefer to be overwintered at an absolute minimum of 10 C which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and as I say our polytunnel out there we sort of keep it about 7 to 8 Celsius, 6 to 7 to 8 depending. We never let it drop below, below 5 which is about 41 degree Fahrenheit but it's still too cold for these and for us to keep that polytunnel permanently at 10 C 50 would be a huge electric bill so we overwinter them in the kitchen may not be the most aesthetically to look at but they do well and our plants sort of come before what the house looks like <laughs> and um, they're doing well they're not really doing a lot as such they're just overwintering there now I did do a video a couple of weeks ago well probably a few weeks ago now where this incredible um Pachycerius um uh, sorry, Pyloserius, sorry, excuse me, actually was starting to form a bud in the middle of the kitchen, completely out of the time of year. Now, the bud is still on. It's got a little bit bigger. It hasn't dropped off, but I really don't think it's going to come into anything. It's just gone pretty dormant now. So that's a bit of a what's happening with that there. And um, here we are. We start off on this side. We have a beautiful begonia here. A begonia picked up. This is absolutely growing, incredible. I mean, look at that, guys. It is beautiful. It's a lovely big long cane at the top. And at the back there, we have a Euphorbia triangularis that is, again, overwintering, so not really doing much. Um, it's a little bit away from the window, but it gets plenty of light coming across. Enough, oops, sorry, the camera just get the light in again. Enough, certainly, for it to overwinter there. Here we have a, a little 
cl clough item there. And here we have a lovely, lovely pilia, peperomioids. And this little beauty here was gifted to us by our beautiful friend Nelly from Collection of Unseen Nature. So thank you, Nelly. This little beauty is doing very well. And if you're not familiar with Nelly, do go over and subscribe to her incredible channel. She has incredible videos on there. And the most amazing exotic pets too, as well as some beautiful plants. So um, here at the back, we have a pineapple plant. Now this is known as the Ananas, um, part of the Bromeliard family. And that is doing well. So it's a little pineapple. It's only tiny, but I think it's gonna be ready to harvest soon. And we're gonna propagate the top part as well. At the back there, we have a Pyloceris gunelii overwintering also. And here we have, um, well, before I go on to this beautiful um, Tilantia, at the back of it, we have a Euphorbia. And that is, I'm not quite sure of the euphorbia, but it has actually got a tiny little flower on it. Euphorbias do sort of tend to want to sort of grow still in the winter time, so we're letting it do its thing. And um, this here is a Tillandsia, commonly known as the air plants. And that is Tillandsia cacticola, blooming lovely. Look at that, guys. And I'm going to make a separate video of that, a bit of an update of how it looks now. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but stay tuned for that. All our other Tillandsias, sorry about the lighting, guys. I just want to get this the best here. All our other Tillandsias here, we have in the window. I'll just go back a little bit so you can see them all hanging there. Give them a good soak in rainwater every day. And um, they seem to be doing very well. And the reason why I'm soaking them every day is because we have the heating on here in the house so they do like to be kept hydrated and um, another Tillandsia here as well now this window we have mostly all euphorbias and I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's just been too long but just going to take just the camera along there so you can see the different types we've got all the collection there some euphorbia mili some other types of euphorbia some euphorbia obesa euphorbia globosa many 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 different types and well, here we have Ripsalidopsis, um, commonly known as the miniature Easter cactus there. So it's a little bit different. Again, we have some Tillandsia air plants mixed in with everything, as you can see there. They're doing very well. And then here we have the little bowl that I made at my horticultural college <laughs> with um, Slumbergia Christmas cactus in, a Thanksgiving cactus. They're doing well there. So that's going to be going into the polytunnel once it's stopped blooming. And here, and now I did a video here on this beauty. And um, this is my very old, possibly 70 years old, Slumbergera truncata, commonly known as the Thanksgiving cactus, but now sort of under the category, everything, all the Slumberger family come under Christmas cactus really nowadays. And it has been blooming lovely. Normally this is in the polytunnel, but I brought it in so we can enjoy the flowers over the holiday period. And as some of you may know, I did cross pollinate the flowers with um, the orange flowering one, which was this one here. The flowers have all dropped off that. So the pollination wasn't an success on the success on the orange flower, but it has been a success on this one. As you can see, there's fruit, there's seed pods starting to swell up where I pollinated the flowers. So that's very good news. There's going to be future seed on this beauty. And I've had seed from this plant before, growing the seedlings upstairs. And they're absolutely adorable, guys. So good fun to grow from seed. Now, I'll take you, yeah, before you wonder what the hell this is lying on here. This is a... This is a Stenocereus turberii, and it's actually a cutting. Hans took a cutting of this because it was, wasn't doing too well on its own roots, and it was sort of going a bit brown and soft and mushy at the base, so we treated it as a cutting. It's completely calloused over, so I think Hans is going to pop this up probably in the next few days, um, which is why it's left, <laughs> left here like that. So we're going to be potting that up, and I think it's going to be making a video when he does it, so stay tuned. And if you're not familiar with my, my wonderful partner Hans's um, channel, do go over and check him out. It's Family of Cactus and other beauties so stay tuned for video coming up on this um, potting this big guy up now here on this side we have a selection of mostly house plants of many different types here in the window we have a Hoya linearis as I say all the um, Tradescantia uh, sorry the Tillandsias all hanging in the window not the best of lighting when I put the camera up so apologies there now here we have a selection of all cuttings rooting here and these cuttings were gifted to us by George so thank you, George, um, from Treasures of Plants. So um, these are all rooting in water very, very successfully. There's an um, epiphyllum yellow flame one, all with roots on it there. And some of the goldfish plants all rooted, some hoya rooted, and um, Senecio radicans, commonly known as I think the string of bananas, all sending out roots. And we're potting them up in the, in the next few days. So stay tuned for that. So mainly cuttings, more tillantsias here. Um, these are growing on this beautiful bromeliard here. As you know, Tillandsia is a part of the bromeliard family, so they do well together. 
Another Devalia here, which is doing very, very well too. And other um, Tradescantias here. Um, the hello Tradescantia sounds a bit like Tilantia, but they are two very, very different. This is Tradescantia, lovely variegated form we got as a cutting from one of our friends here in Belfast. So that is beautiful variegated form. That's coming on nicely. And this is another variegated um, Tradescantia also with um, sort of the lovely pink sort of coloration along the along the leaves, very beautiful. And this one is a Collius. Look at that, guys, commonly known as one of the nettles. Can't remember the exact name of this one now, but it is, a, it is an absolute beauty. Here we have Euphorbia. Euphorbia, nicknamed the, cat, the pencil, cat, pencil cactus, and it's not a cactus, obviously. It's a purely a succulent, but this is nicknamed that as well. And it's Euphorbia tuacali. Crystals there, I love to put crystals all around the plants as well. Not only does it look lovely, but I think crystals and plants are my passion in life. And here we have mostly Tradescantias again. This is another lovely um, variegated form. This type of Tradescantia is nicknamed the Wandering Dew, Wandering Dew and um, obviously because it grows into a lovely hanging basket. We have these growing under the lights, the grow lights here. Seem to be doing very, very well. They've been under these lights probably about a couple of weeks now. So far, so good. As I say, it's only a 20 watt grow like this, so we just want to use it just to overwinter the plants rather than to grow them. As you see, there's no window here. They are close to a window, but there's no window there. So this almost acts as a portable window, put in a window where there's no window. And they're responding very well. We've got little begonia at the back. This is nicknamed begonia tiger because of its beautiful little leaves and the little spots on, really beautiful. And um, that's pretty much there. And then I'm going to take you now into the this is our collection of ferns. Now we have some more ferns up in the bedroom, so I'm gonna show you them in a bit. But this is actually the ferns here in the kitchen. They do very well. There's a mixture of a few different types. I'm not gonna go into all the names because I can't remember the names of them all. But um, they are sort of happy, happy there anyway. They get light, sort of more indirect light. It's nice, bright in the kitchen here. But the light they get is more indirect because it's very bright and it just got tiny bits of sun coming over at this time of year when the sun is lower in the sky. But in the in the summer when the sun is strong, they're sort of more in the shade there. So it seems to be do pretty well. So there you go, guys. That's the living room and that's the kitchen. And now I'm going to show you the upstairs. Now we're upstairs and this is the office, or my office, I should say. <laughs> and first of all, we start off with the plant stand here. And um, that is what we used to have outside in the summer with all the plants on. And obviously they're overwintering indoors here because they're not cold hardy ones. Got a collection of Hylocereus, some Ripsalis, um, and also Chlorophytum. Now Chlorophytum are pretty cold hardy, but because these do need a lot of watering, they're better off in the house because they're sort of keeping the polytunnel pretty arid and dry. So. These are better off here. And you can see lots of babies on them. They're doing really well. Great because the hanging basket stands are wonderful with the big hanging plants. As you can see here, this is the, the Ripsalis. And that is doing very well. Nicknamed the mistletoe cactus. As you can see, it does actually look like mistletoe. And when it has the little berries, they have like little white little fruits on them that actually do look so much like mistletoe. And uh, as I say, a few different types of uh, Sort of Ripsalis here. This is another one here, Ripsalis crispata. This is one of the ones that's not so cold hardy, which is why we actually have this in the house. We've got a lot of other Ripsalis in the polytunnel, so stay tuned when I put that video on later on. As I say, Chlorophytum doing very well. Another little Ripsalis variety here. This is a Ripsalis casutha. And um, that is doing very nice there. And I see Hylocereus here, <laughs> and another Hylocereus there, both grown from seed, as you can see, very large. Now they're up to the plant table and um, a selection of everything. Now I'll start off first of all with the little seedlings. Now I actually did a separate video on an update on all of the, all of the seedlings. I'll just turn the camera so you can see it a little bit better there. On all of the seedlings the other day, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but basically you can just see them there all in the window here. A selection of um, Lophophora, we've got Echinopsis, we've got Raybusha, we've got um, some Euphorbias as well. We've also got some Trachocereus, some Astrophytums, and also we have Epiphyllums and everything growing there. We have a uh, Slumbergia Christmas Cactus, that's the seed from the big plant you saw downstairs earlier. As I say, I've also done a separate video on them, so do check them out. They'll probably do just before this video was uploaded, so you'll see them there. And um, here we have um, 
little mixture of everything, a punctures and loads and loads. And in the window there, now look at that guys, that's my Phalaenopsis. Look at the beautiful white blooms. I'd see if I can, it's difficult to reach. Are you guys the same when you have so many plants you can't reach them in the window? <laughs> this is the dilemma I have guys. But um, hopefully you get an idea of them beautiful blooms of the Phalaenopsis there. Absolutely beautiful. As I say, a selection of different orchids I have at the back there. A couple of dendrobiums. One is a purple flower and one is a white. Obviously they're out of flower now, but happy to say, do you show you the buds here? And the dendrobium here in the window, can you see them buds guys? That's my white flowering dendrobium nobili. So very excited to, to see buds on that. It's going to be blooming lovely soon. So um, I'll keep you updated on that. And um, Miltonia and Zygobitalum, a few different selection here. And um, then we have some of the carnivorous plants here as well, and the pentes that are not cold hardy. So they're overwintering here in the plant room. And here we have the Slumbergeria punteoides. And yes, this is actually Slumbergia, guys, commonly known as the Christmas cactus. Um, these were cuttings that um, we got this year and they're growing really, really well. And they look so much like a puncture, don't they? You know, commonly known as the Bugs Bunny cactus with the, the ears on them. But they're 100% Christmas Slumbergia uh, cacti. It's just that they're so like a puncture. Um, hence the nickname Slumbergia apuntioides. And here we have some Prescia, a few different ones here. Um, our two Ocotillos, this is Ocotillo Crown of Thorns here, and another Ocotillo here as well. This is Ocotillo columnaris, and here Prescia, three different types of Prescia, and um, also here Prescia as well, God Sefiana. And this Prescia here is the one that we are growing for the for Josh, grow it for Josh. And it is doing really well. Look at that, guys, growing very happy there. And this one here is a Cissus quadruli quad reangularis. What a name! I love this plant because it's just gorgeous and chunky. And um, again, overwintering now this time of year. And a few more carnivores that we've got here. This little plant here is this is what uh, George again from. Um, Treasures of Plants gifted us, George and Francisco, so thank you guys. This is Serapagia woody eye, and it's the beautiful variegated form. Again, I've actually got roots in it in water because I just haven't got around to potting it up, and it's got roots, so very happy about that. As you can see, you can see in there, but there's loads of roots, so I'm going to be potting that up, so stay tuned for a video when I pot that up. Now here, guys, that is a big bud on my Venus flytrap, um, Dionea muscu muscula, and um, that's going to be flowering soon. I know it's completely out of season, not meant to be flowering this time of year, meant to be overwintering, but because I've got it indoors and it's under these grow lights, it's encouraged it to bloom. But that's going to be interesting when that happens. Let me just take you over here now. Here we have some more euphorbias, it's overwintering, some euphorbia giants. And then we have some more of the UFO grow lights there, because as you can see, there's no window on this side. The window ends there. So grow lights are great, uh, portable windows to put a window where there's no window. And these are only 50 watt LED ones from Kingbo. And 50 watts low electric, so it doesn't add much to the electric bill. And it gives a window. Now I've actually turned it off today because when I'm making the video, if this is on, it's just going to be and you're just going to have it complete purple. So I've turned this off to film the video, but normally that would be on and it'd be giving light here to these plants. These are all our Prescheopsis, um, which are commonly used as grafting plants. Me and Hansi don't graft our plants. We um, just like Prescheopsis. <laughs> but uh, we have a forest of them. As you can see, they seem to be doing well under the grow lights. They really should be just overwintering at the moment. They shouldn't really be sending out all this new growth. But obviously, because we have the lights on, which we don't really have to do um, to overwinter cacti. They just need to be kept cool and dry and preferably in a cool place. But... Obviously, this is my office, so we have to heat it. So they're continuing to grow. And um, here is a Euphorbia Sudanica. And look at that, it's got little flowers on. That's also responding well to the, to the grow lights. As I say, a lot of the Euphorbias still want to grow this time of year. Now, this beautiful giant here, guys. Whew. This is an Alacarsia. And isn't it just gorgeous? Just look at the humongous big leaves on this beauty. Yes, I know it needs repotting. It's desperate, as you can see. But I'm going to be waiting until probably February when it's a bit more spring and I'm going to repot this into a beautiful, probably get a lovely big planter ceramic pot for this beauty. This was gifted to us by the, the beautiful Olga from Olga's Dreamland. So thank you, Olga. It was just a little tuber like that. And um, look at it now. It is just remarkable. And here on the plant stand, I have a little plant stand here. 
and um, have a lovely fern at the top here also one of the um, ones with the furry rhizome roots absolutely lovely that's doing well on there so say this is a great place for these type of plants because they get bright but indirect light which they seem to like chlorophytum as well this is a nice a very sort of white version of chlorophytum this is another tradescantia here the lovely dark green one and this is one that Hans actually grew from seed um, quite remarkable and I'll show you the mother plant in um, the other plant room we've got after this and uh, these are all chlorophytums here this one was grown from seed from um, my friend Jude from Cape Cod Nursery she sent me some seeds from her own plant and this is chlorophytum there and these are ones that we got again all seed grown and what's interesting is that when you grow chlorophytum commonly known as the spider plant which is this one here from seed it doesn't grow variegated it grows completely green so bear that in mind if you're going to be growing these from seed i actually love the all green version i think it's lovely but some people think it just looks like grass and it's uninteresting without the stripes but i love them both here we have more crystals around the place and um, here is my very old um chlorophytum that I've had for many many years here and this if you want to know what this is this is not a plant this is actually Hans's old dreadlocks that he had years and years ago guys I know <laughs> um, it is his own hair believe me but he had them cut out some some years ago and he regrew them again and I just think they're really wacky <laughs> I just have it next to the chlorophytum because I just think they look funny together anyway I'm weird but um, there you go so that's that and that's the plant stand and I'm going to show you plant room two now Now here we are in plant room two and we have a few things here all over wintering and I'm just going to show you in the window first of all. Now although these plants might look a little bit um, as if they're dead, <laughs> this is actually um, a Pereschia um, Godsefiana and it's, when it's kept dry to overwinter it's common it loses its leaves. The ones I've got in my office I've still been watering so I've kept the leaves but Hansi in, in the room here he doesn't mean more. These are his two he's had for absolutely years here. And um, he leaves them every year. He lets them to completely overwinter. They drop their leaves and then they form a load of new leaves again in the spring. So that's why they're it's looking like that. <laughs> now here, as I say, I've already done a video on all the seedlings. So I won't go into too much detail here. But just briefly, a mixture of a few different cactus seedlings here, all mixed. And here we've got Epiphyllum seedlings. These are all mostly from our own plants, but these are from a seed pack mix um, that we had here. So I'm not quite sure what we've actually got growing on here, but a selection of a few different things. Here, as I say, Epiphyllum, that's seeds from our own plants that we propagated ourselves. A few little tiny seeds there. Again, a mixture of a few different types of seeds, mainly Trichocereus and Rebusha. And here we've got mainly overwintering different types of plants here, as you can see. Um, difficult to get it because <laughs> we have a lot, of, a lot of plants here. So I'm um, hoping you can get a bit of an idea of what we've got. We don't really do a lot with these in this room as they're all mainly all overwintering. And um, this is a... So let's show you this here, more um, Cleister cactus, one of Hans is here. Oh, it's one of the hybrids, I and mean, we're not sure of the cold hardiness of it, so this is why we overwintering that indoors here. And here we have Stapelia, and we have some Stapelia seedlings as well, which we have in the window here, they're doing well. Then we have another, we have a, um, Ga a Gasteria there in the window, and a selection of different types of cacti as well, all over wintering. Here we have the Dracaena, we still keep this watered because obviously it's a house plant and this was a cutting that is doing very, very well. And um, here we have a patchy phytum, also overwintering. And then here we have another Tradescantia. Now this is the Tradescantia that has, was Hans has had for many years and he's been growing this one from seed. Um, yeah, he actually grew this one from seed and then the one I showed you in my office is actually from seed from this mother plant. So that's incredible. This one here we have the ZZ plant. Seems to be very happy in that position there. As I say, this is mostly again a north facing window but we do have grow lights here. I'll just show you there. We have another one going across on this side here so on dark days we do put the lights on to give a bit of extra extra light as well to the plants and especially for the seedlings because they still want to be kept growing at this time of year and um to show you in the window here selection of a few different things of mellow cacti that are not cold hardy that we've got overwintering here and also lovely lovely um stapelia uh, 
Christata, which is incredible. That was also gifted to us from Nelly from Collection of Unseen Nature. Thank you, Nelly. And there's Topelia seedlings there. Just trying to see if I've missed anything else out. But um, that's mainly all, all in this, not too many in here, as you can see. And um, there, more selection. <laughs> And that's, oh yeah, God, how could I forget? This is our Poinsettia, um, Euphorbia pulchima. And this has been growing remarkable. We've had this now for over a year and it was that size when we got it. And I say it's blooming lovely again. Hans has worked his magic with getting this to flower by using the lights and, and arranging it so it's coming to flower again this year and it's doing very well. Obviously, we're still keeping this watered. Um, so that's still actively growing. And um, that's grow room number two. And now I'm gonna show you the bathroom. Now guys, here is our little bathroom. It's only tiny, but still great to put plants in. And we have mostly in here, we have our tillantias, commonly known as the air plants. As you know, we had a load of them hanging up downstairs in the kitchen, um, but we have them here. The bathroom is a great, great spot for them because of the humidity. And also because, although it's a sunny window, they do like sun, um, uh, tillantia, but they do like, prefer a bit more of the indirect sun. And this window is frosted. So it's a good sort of semi-sun window position. And they seem to be doing very well. Now, to show you here, we've got some more tillantia here. These are more like the Bromeliardi type. They've been flowering, sort of coming to the end of their flowering there. Here we have a lovely big ficus um, plant. <laughs> this we've had for, well, I've had, I should say, for many, 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 many years. And it seems to be doing very well here, flourishing. And um, to say, another one here, this is a tillantia cyanea, the lovely big flower bat. That's been flowering the most beautiful purple flowers for, for weeks and weeks. Now it's just coming to the end there. Now here we have our, a little moss pole. I'll just show you. Difficult to get the light in here, but there's a moss pole there that we have a lot of our tillantias all growing on. And they do so well on this moss pole, guys. As you can see there, they are blooming, not, not blooming, well, they have been blooming a lot of them, but blooming lovely as in it's blooming lovely. <laughs> They're growing lovely, I should say. Lots of pups forming as well on them. So they seem to be doing very well. Here we have a Funkiana, Tillandsia Funkianas in the window there. So that's our little bathroom. Tiny, but very happy, happy with the planties. And now I'm gonna show you the ferns in our bedroom. Now, this is our bedroom and it is mainly ferns in here. We have a couple of uh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffleras, what a tongue twister. We have our shuffleras here, sort of facing the window and they sort of get plenty of light but without too much direct sunshine so they seem to, to really suit them there. Again, more crystals around the place. <laughs> they do very well here. And as I say, this is our lovely... Um, our lovely Nephrolepis exaltata that is growing so well and we have these Hans has a really beautiful all like a fam family heirloom that he's had for many years here that this is growing on top it's beautiful look at that little birds on with the lovely feet on it beautiful and many Nephrolepis different varieties in the window here doing well and that's it and that is all our indoor house plants guys and as I say stay tuned I'm going to be doing the um, polytunnel mostly the cacti and succulents in the polytunnel um, update. I may not be able to have a chance to get it done today, but I'm gonna be putting this video on first. This is part one. And then part two is gonna be the polytunnel collection. So stay tuned for that and um, possibly coming on probably tomorrow, if not later today. So stay tuned guys. And as I say, I want to wish you all happy holidays and an amazing new year. And thank you all for your constant support. And if you want to know more about how to grow cacti and succulents, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I've got lots of plans on there to do lots of future blogs on how-to videos and things like that. So stay tuned guys. And again, thanks so much for your support. Send you loads of love and heaps of happiness as always from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, guys. Bye.